Hello, welcome to this webinar on uh, the interactive uh, analysis of preclinical volume uh, data sets with Imalytics Preclinical. My name is Stephen Marchin. I'm the CEO and founder of Medilumine. Uh, it's a privilege today to have with us Dr. Felix Gremse from the University of Aachen. Uh, Felix is the uh, medical informatics team leader at the Experimental Molecular Imaging Platform at the University of Aachen. Thank you for attending the webinar today. I hope you and your families are all safe and healthy during this uh, global COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's, uh, I met Felix for the first time at the World Molecular uh, Imaging Conference in Montreal uh, about a year ago, and it became clear in our conversations that our, our customers were dealing with similar problems. Uh, namely, you know, how do you find an approach to quite simply uh, be able to quantify volumes in preclinical imaging data sets across many different modalities? And um, we, uh, we then uh, started working together and Medilumine became the authorized uh, distributor of the analytics platform. Uh, some of our early adopters, the feedback that we've been able to get is that uh, with just a simple investment in a NVIDIA uh, GPU graphic card, uh, which is already present on many gaming uh, computers. Um, very rapidly by watching our tutorials, they were able to track and, 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 and quantify uh, volumetric data sets um, over time. So uh, not only on just one computer, but on many different users within uh, a research institute. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, I'd like to now um, pass over the presentation to uh, Felix, uh, Dr. Gremze, who is going to go in a little further into the details now of how the analytic software is working. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Stephen, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, Dr. Gremze. Okay, and you can see my screen? I can see your screen as well, yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so I will talk about the Emulutics preclinical software. And um, it is a software for interactive image analysis featuring 3D segmentation operations. It's fast and it's versatile. It's easy to learn. It has been used for more than 100 papers right now. And on the top, you can see a few examples. And I will show some examples uh, throughout this talk. And it's particularly good for multimodal images like CT, uh, FLT, what we used it a lot, but also for CT and SPECT, CT PET, or MRI PET, that kind of multimodal data. And why um, is the interactive software useful? People ask that sometimes, so it's uh, an automated analysis would of course be great with automated segmentation, but it's quite difficult to implement. It takes a lot of time and it may work for some special applications and then it's great. But in uh, research, you may realize that every project is special, special probes, systems, protocols, and people. And then um, a reasonable solution in my experience turns out to be a flexible combination of fast interactive operations to get your um, study done. And I have a lot of experience with um, studies and we've published a lot of papers with my colleagues. Um, here are some examples, mostly about the combination of microCT and uh, fluorescence tomography. And we've also used it for many unimodal data sets for microCT a lot but also ultrasound and MRI images. So the software works basically for anything where you have voxels in 3D or uh, 2D, cine loops for ultrasound or even in 4D, like in PET data. So then you can use uh, the software. The requirements are a, a Windows 64-bit operating system, 
and an NVIDIA GPU. Unfortunately, almost any uh, Office PC can be upgraded with a low-cost NVIDIA GPU for around 60 euros. Uh, those are small and they fit into almost any PC. And together with uh, Stephen from Mediglumine, um, we are distributing the software and there are flexible plans available online at his website. You can go for a monthly subscription or annual licenses with uh, full support and upgrades included or with a, for a perpetual license with an annual service contract. Or you can get a 15-day free trial. And uh, we are continuously evolving the software and we have added modules for 3D printing, relaxometry, spectral unmixing, vascular analysis, bone analysis, and image fusion. They are all included. Um, why does the software require a uh, GPU? Modern data sets are typically large. They can be, for example, four gigabyte or even 20 gigabyte for a, a micro CD data set, for example. And then if you work with it interactively, your workflow should be fluent and you can live maybe with a, you can wait a few seconds or ideally less. But if you have to wait minutes for every processing step, it becomes very inefficient. And the GPUs, they just have the processing power and memory speed to uh, achieve that interactive processing. And I will give a demo right now here. So this is the uh, software. And when you uh, start it, you can load your own data here with load underlay. Um, and many file formats are supported here almost anything that is out there. Um, but we have also installed data sets here under help tutorials. And um, you can load a data set and you can watch also a video. Uh, and that's a tutorial video on that data set. So you can practice what you see in the video. And there are different applications being covered here. And these videos and data sets there are uh, typically very helpful for uh, new users to learn to use the software very quickly. And um, I will show here some example. So this is a um, CT FLT data set with a segmentation. And what you see is now three data sets. It's, let me start with the CT data set. We typically call that the underlay. And you can also open here different slice views, actual coronal and sagittal and you can navigate through them. You can use these mouse modes here to uh, navigate through and or to, to zoom. And But there are also shortcuts which I'm going to use. You can look them up here. Uh, that makes it much faster here to, to zoom is the typical um, way just to use control in the mouse wheel here. And it works in 2D and 3D. So, um, But the easy way to get started is to use the mouse modes here. Um, so, and then what you, what we have here is an overlay that's from the um, PET, oh, sorry, from the FMT data set. And we can also jump here into the urinary bladder. That's where the fluorescence is here. So it's a 3D data set. So we have two 3D data sets. And if you just have the fluorescence in 3D, it's not really uh, helpful. You just see some colorful uh, blobs. But together with the micro CD data, you have the anatomical reference information, and you can use that to define regions and for quantification. So here in this tutorial, I loaded two regions, the uh, urinary bladder here and the lung. And I will just um, delete them now here. We call them classes, and I will hide the overlay, and I will um, segment them again. So let's start with the lung. So um, the lung is something uh, dark surrounded by a bright regions and we can segment it using region drawing and but we need to do a thresholding first to um, segment everything below a threshold, for example, 700. Now we have all the dark voxels here, they are green. You, so, you see a big uh, a cube here, that's the air outside. And inside you can see the lung. And now we can add a class lung and just um, 
fetch it here. Now we have the lung and we can uh, delete the class, uh, the temp class, and we have the lung in 3D. And let's uh, cut off the trachea because it doesn't belong to the lung. So I'm just jumping somewhere to the slice views. Now I'm using the scribbles and drawing a uh, scribble here and then press F2, that's for a quick cut. And now I can add another class, uh, trachea, and fetch the trachea with the full region operation. And it'll just flow until we reach the cut here. Um, the lung has some little holes inside here from blood vessels. Um, could also be metastases, but in this case, it's blood vessels. But I can close these holes quickly using a morphologic closing operation of around, let's say, I use four boxes that is closing these holes here. Now let's go to the urinary bladder, which is a, a round object. And it's not easily distinguished from the surrounding by a uh, thresholding, but um, we can use the scribbles here to uh, segment the bladder. So it's always helpful to uh, zoom in. And now you delineate the organ with these scribbles here, and you can do that in any orientation. And press F3 to connect it, and then slice through and continuously add more scribbles and press F3. And it's like providing a wireframe. You segment your organ and it's like a wireframe that is covered with a kitchen foil and then filled. That's how it basically works. And um, we can just add more. Typically around uh, 10 of these scribbles or wires are sufficient. And then let's add a class uh, bladder and press F4. And now we have the bladder in 3D and we can apply a smoothing, for example, to make it a bit more roundish. And now we have these um, the three organs segmented and we can get the quantification and um, so if we want to quantify the fluorescence, we would expect a high fluorescence in the urinary bladder as we see it here, because it has been cleared via the kidneys. So let's uh, check that here. So you can see a table here and you have a, a row for each organ and there you see the volume. So the trachea is the smallest and the lung the biggest and you have the mean intensity of the fluorescence, and there you see that the bladder is the biggest. And you can save this as a, a CSV file and open it in Excel for further computation. And uh, let me load uh, another example data set. Um, here a, um, a bone implant. Here this is from a uh, dentistry there a um, implant has been uh, placed into the uh, jaw of a rabbit and so it's from my colleagues and they were interested in the bone growth around it so how much it is covered by bone and what you can do is, is uh, first to rotate it uh, straight and then you will see that it is a, uh, a cylinder it's just changing the, uh, the views here. And then using a segmentation, like a sequence of first uh, thresholding to generate the, um, uh, the implant, then you coat it and then apply a thresholding on the coating. Then you get the here, the, the bone uh, on the surrounding. And then you can quantify the percentage of uh, grown bone around it. So this is around, I guess, 70% covered by bone, and that would be your um, quantification result. Let's have a look at uh, some other example here um, for uh, image fusion. Here I have two micro CT scans. Um, and they're uh, slightly misaligned. 
So let's uh, change the windowing a bit for the overlay. And it's a typical example. So when you scan a mouse uh, several times or when you use two modalities, you would like to uh, fuse them on top of each other. And there are several ways to achieve that with the software. So you can um, use it just manually, just uh, set the translation here. So let's just um, shift it around a bit. That was the wrong direction here. You can then align it manually until it fits, or you can uh, place markers here in these elbows, for example. Um, I can add marker one here, you need just three markers. Marker two. Marker three. And then we do the same on the overlay, but we have to set the overlay to ISO rendering. So we have to set the markers on the overlay. So we place it here in the elbow. Marker one. Marker two. Marker three. And then Fusion, say, um, register overlay to underlay. And now you can see they are on top of each other here. Um, I toggle that they are matching. So you can use the markers for fusion, or you can use the intensities of the image for image based fusion. Furthermore, you can perform a lot of image operations. So um, before starting to uh, segment, you often would like to uh, process your image, for example, by uh, cropping. You might have a huge data set of here almost nine gigabyte, and uh, that might be just too slow. So you can crop out a region of interest. And you get a much smaller file that is easier to work with. Um, then you can um, adjust your image by uh, rotating it. You can flip it, transpose, or extend it on the borders. Or you can apply a Gaussian filter here, um, because sometimes it's just too noisy to uh, process. And then you can filter it, which makes it more smooth. You lose some resolution. But sometimes it's um, still the better approach. And let me actually show that here um, with this example of trabecular bone here. This is a um, piece of bone from a sheep knee, and we have uh, different bone structures here. Yeah. And let me smooth it a bit with a Gaussian filter. And so you can see here we have big gaps between um, the probicular structures. We can actually measure the distance here. Um, but what we um, then can do is select a region, we can place a cylinder, you can see it in 3D here. Um, the way to do that is just um, you say right click and say create region cylinder and then tell it the sizes. But they are um, here already. And then you can, with the bone menu here, say um, bone statistics, and you need to provide a threshold to tell the software at what level it is bone. And here you can see the values here. So we pick a threshold between the soft tissue and between the bone. So it's something like uh, 3,500. And it's computing the uh, bone statistics for the two regions here. And you can see the bone volume, or the relative volume of the bone and the bone, so the, the surface of the bone and here the trabecular thickness and the trabecular spacing. And you see here that the uh, A, that's the um, blue region, has a higher trabecular spacing than the green region, as it also looks like. Furthermore, you can do some uh, downsampling. 
for example, with binning, which also reduces the size um, to help you in your further processing. And it also reduces the noise. And all these operations are um, parallelized or GPU accelerated, and they work with large data. Um, but you may need a computer also with uh, enough RAM, enough um, memory also to hold the data set. So I also uh, I showed this before. Um, you can use the software to delineate organs, for example, for a biodistribution assessment with a, a PET scan, PET CD scan, so you can segment the organs based on the CT. And there are many um, operations, interactive operations like thresholding, region growing, morphologic operations, smoothing. You can create known regions. You can find large and small components or enclosed components. And there is an undo redo feature. And I will explain it a bit in detail. So the thresholding and region growing is, for example, nice to segment different bone parts and separate them from each other. It's like what I showed for the lung. Um, the morphologic operations are nice to uh, fill holes here in the, in the lung, for example. Or with the erosion, you can um, get rid of small um, spaghettis or little artifacts that are somewhere. And these dilation operations, they, they are uh, rounders, so they are more natural. So many other softwares, they provide them and they they use the Manhattan distance, which is easier to implement. But um, for natural data sets, I prefer to use these uh, round morphologic operations based on a, a distance map. Then you can uh, compute small or large components. So you can basically filter your uh, regions based on size. So when you perform a thresholding here, that's the, the green stuff that you get. Then you can pick the largest component, that's the skeleton here. And it's not connected to the arms, so they would be the next two large components. But you can fetch also small components here, like the uh, this is a part of the food in the stomach or in the intestine, to get rid of those or to find them or to to count them. Then there is undo and redo for the segmentation supported, so you can um, go forward, try something out, and didn't work out, you just go back and do undo, and the software remembers the last 20 steps of all uh, segmentation operations. That is very uh, nice for a fast workflow. Then the segmentation rendering is uh, has a high quality and it's very robust. It's based on ray uh, casting, actually. And on the left, you can see some rendering from another very expensive software, which uh, just perform some uh, coarse meshing to be fast, but uh, our software performs a very accurate rendering that's also pleasant to work with for several hours. The rendering works in combination for the underlay, for the micro CT, for the segmentation, and for the overlay, for example, a fluorescence data set here, and you can combine it in any combination or all together. And you can also do mid renderings, max, maximum intensity projections, but uh, it's also sometimes useful. But I often prefer these isosurface renderings because they look more natural. Then, when you have defined your regions, you can perform statistical analysis like um, the mean, the volume, min max values, or a standard deviation of your regions, or you can compute distances. Um, like the distance of the length of a bone or the size of a tumor. You can measure angles. Um, you can extract histograms of intensities, generate line profiles, or you can count uh, the number of um, components, for example, um, these little calcifications. Um, and we have several modules for vascular analysis, bone analysis, image fusion, and relaxometry. We've used the software a lot for uh, fat quantification because in MicroCT the, the body fat is a little bit darker. And then we came up with an interactive workflow to segment the, the body fat here, it's shown in blue. And you can see in the obese mice, they are really very fatty. And then you can quantify that 
and determine the fat mass of the whole animal with a micro CT scan. We've used it intensely for um, multimodal fluorescence tomography, and they would typically have this combination of the underlay and the overlay, so it's a CT and the FMT data set. And then we perform a segmentation of the organs for all points in time, and then we get the organ curves here. We've used it for bone analysis for um, uh, the structure of the bone. It can compute uh, different features, and we've compared it with Bone J, and it's very much the same, the result, so it's uh, quite accurate. And the underlying method is the same. It's just uh, faster, because when you process large data sets with Bone J, it becomes very slow. And I think it's, while Bone J is nice and versatile, it's not very um, handy, and you takes very long to get into it and to process your data. And so with our GPU accelerated method, it's just much faster also for large data sets. And we tested that with some artificial example data set. Here, this is the example of the bone implant that I showed before, where we um, determined the um, ratio of the regrown bones after implanting this uh, cylinder. And um, this is the fusion example. And we provide these uh, three methods of fusion, manual alignment, marker-based, and image-based alignment. And here is an um, example for a, a rat that was scanned in the micro CT. And the, there was harvested a piece of bone here from the rat hip, was cut out. and um, so we acquired a scan before and after words and wanted then to measure how much was lost and then later how much um, would regrow. And so the problem with that, if you want to fuse the scans, you can see it here as underlay and overlay. The problem is that the, the legs have a different pose. So that can disturb your um, fusion. So what we did was we segmented here, this part of the hip, shown in brown, and then the fusion is restricted to this region, and the hip before and after, they just snap on top of each other, lying on top of each other here, and then we can use this here to segment the um, bone defect. If you have a segmentation, you can export it as a STL file, and send it to a 3D printer. Here I printed a, a mouse lung, and that can be quite useful. Then there are features for um, vascular analysis for stenosis measurements here. Um, this is a human carotid artery, for example, with a big stenosis here and some plaques. And then this method fits a virtual elastic sphere through the vessel here and determines the, the diameter of the sphere. And you can see here the curve, the quantification curve. Here you have this dip, and this corresponds to this stenosed region. In mice, it looks a bit different. So you have a long, not one a single stenosis, rather the whole um, carotid artery is stenosed. Then there's a relaxometry model, module. Um, so relaxometry is an MRI technique and you acquire multi-echo uh, scans, and then you are interested in the curve of a region or of a voxel here, because it's an exponential curve. And what you actually would like to have is this expo exponent here, which is uh, the R value or the rack symmetry. In this case, it's the R2 value, because it was a T2 multi-echo sequence. And then you get uh, um, a map of these coefficients here, so it's computed for every voxel, and you can use it for quantification here. And this is a 96 well plate with different contrast agents. And here on the bottom were those that had the um, strongest um, R2 value. Then there is a kinetic uh, modeling um, part. Here we have a PET example data here with the um, Hatsa tracer, which slowly accumulates in a tumor 
So here's the tumor, but only very little goes in, but then this contrast agent is trapped in the tumor um, because it's uh, hypoxic and cannot, and the, the agent cannot get out. And you can see it here if we analyze the curve in the tumor, it just increases slowly, whereas in the blood it um, increases here after injection and then it goes down. And in muscle, you have a, a bit of a peak early and then it gets washed out. But in the tumor, you will have hardly any um, vascularization in this uh, hypoxic tumor, but still you see some slow accumulation over time. And this can be analyzed using a um, kinetic model here with um, three compartments, for example. Then we get these coefficients here, uh, three coefficients, relative blood volume, this fusion parameter and the uptake parameter for every um, voxel. And then you can see that the tumor lights up here. Whereas in the original image, it's very dark. You can hardly see uh, the tumor. But when you do this kinetic modeling, you get a quantitative parameter for the tissue. And it's not only working for the tumor, but also for the liver, because it also accumulates the agent and the bladder, for example. And then we have an extensive um, user manual um, describing all the functionality. And we have these tutorial videos. I think it's uh, 12 videos currently with uh, different subtitles in different languages, Chinese, German, English, and French, and Russian, and a few more, actually. And so these tutorial videos are together with the example data that is installed with the software are very useful to get started with the software very quickly. So within a few hours, you should be able to uh, do the first um, quantification on segmentation tasks and get started with your image analysis. We also published um, the software and the imaging, what we used it for also in Jones in the video. It's open access, you can have a look at that as well if you're interested. And yeah, it's used at um, more than 30 sites actually all over the world in Europe, USA, China, and Australia, Canada, South America. Um, and it's getting more and more also with the help of Stephen from Medilumine. So um, yeah, that's um, it for this part. So I thank you for your attention and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, I just noticed that I didn't turn on my webcam, so that's me, sorry, I forgot to turn it on. But I hope you're more interested in the slides anyways. So there is some question. So um, there's a question from Dr. Susaneto about um, root canals. So I guess that's from uh, teeth, and probably you work on micros with microcities to scan uh, teeth. Um, and yes, you can um, make such measurements. You can measure the area, uh, like or the surface of uh, such root canals. And uh, you can measure the uh, some features um, like density or these uh, morphologic features. Um, yeah, I think that would work. There's a form factor, for example, for uh, roundness. Yeah.
Porosity is not uh, supported yet, but I uh, might add that if that's interesting. Yeah, thank you for the question. Any more questions? How to decide what is the right value for a bone threshold? Um, so the, um, the scans are typically calibrated for a Hounsfield units. Then um, you can, so they are comparable to each other. And so for thresholding, I usually pick a threshold between the two tissues that I want to separate. So I can, um, I determine the intensity of here the soft tissue and then of the bone. You can sample it a few times and then um, compute this, the, the average value between those two. That will give you the most unbiased uh, segmentation. Or what you can do is visually um, increase here this center value for the windowing. And because on the right panel here in the um, ISO surface rendering, you see everything above this center value. You can see the center value here, and that can help you find a threshold. I can show an example here with the uh, liver tumors here in 3D. This is a, a scan of a mouse with a liver contrast, and it had uh, liver tumors, and the spleen is also enhanced, and um, we we'll smooth it a bit, and if we can pick different thresholds here, a high threshold for the bones, a um, little bit lower threshold for the spleen, because it's brighter than the liver, and if we go further down, we see a, thresh, uh, a threshold here for the liver. And if you go down further, you can threshold, or you can segment the whole um, body and um, the mouse bed, the whole, um, anything that's matter. Okay, does that answer the questions? What file extensions are compatible with the software? Um, many, so we can um, check it here. So you can load uh, nifty files, analyze files, these are MicroPET files from um, the old Siemens Indium systems, ultrasound files from the Visual Sonic systems. These are files from an old MicroCT. You can load TIFF files as stacks, as 3D or 2D TIFFs. These MHD files are commonly used. PARIC files from uh, MRI and RD files are common. PNG files, uh, Skyscan records. VFF files, VOX files, many files, Dicom files, and we even developed our own file format, the GRACE file format. Um, after having dealt with all these file formats, we um, kind of took the best of all of them and um, published it um, around a year ago um, as a paper to, cut, to uh, kind of come out, combine all the advantages of these file formats into one new file format because there was no file format that was really um, very good, I think. And I'm happy to support new file formats. If you have a new file format from a system, you can send me an example data set and then I will try to uh, support it. Is there any support for segmentation of heart or coronary arteries from a gated CT? Um, we actually have a tutorial about that here for cardiac imaging. Let me load the example data set here. Um, and this is a, a gated mouse heart. So we have 10 phases and I can, so this is a 4D data set. We can uh, look at the properties here. It has um, four phases here, 
And let me um, zoom in a bit here. And here you can see the left ventricle. And if we now go through the time points, you can see the heart uh, pumping. And in the tutorial video here, which you can uh, play here, you can uh, you can figure out how to segment the left ventricle. Let me just open the white paper and show you the figure here. Um, so the trick is to first segment the bones to get rid of them, and then segment the uh, vasculature. And with a cut, you ca can get the left ventricle here, and then you can get the volume and you get a curve here from these 10 time points. You get this uh, ventricle volume, and then you can compute here the left ventricular ejection fraction based on the maximum and the minimum, for example. Okay. Very nice questions. Next question. Do the measurements have the same accuracy and precision as those obtained by the micro CT? Um, that depends. I don't know how accurate the micro CT measurement is, but what you basically load into the software here, you can see the voxels, is exactly the same data set that the uh, micro CT um, produces. Um, so the data is exactly the same, um, but the software is different. But um, if you have, if you buy a micro CT, you will often just get a, um, a basic software, because the micro CT companies are typically hardware companies, and they sell great uh, micro CTs, but not so great uh, software. And that's why there are software companies that sell uh, software like. My software, or is it suitable for any micro CT? Because it doesn't make sense for every micro CT hardware vendor to develop the same software over and over again. So, um, yes, I think it has the same accuracy or typically better because the software is just better. I hope that answers the question. Can you analyze MRI data? Can you analyze 4D data? Uh, yes. So um, this CT data set is also 4D. So yes, 4D is possible. Um, and let me load an MRI data set here from a um, well played. Um, and there. We can go through the time, and then you see here this DK. So this is a real uh, 4D data set. It has 20 time points from a reximetry scan, and um, then we can perform here a reximetry, and it's loaded as overlay. And now we have the R2 map as overlay, and we can um, quantify. Here we can, we can uh, segment. Oops, let me segment well here. We call it A. There it is. And now we can make actually copies of this well here. It's a nice feature to segment repetitive uh, regions. And now we can get the statistics. Here and we get the the R value here um, for each of those wells, and so on the, on the bottom you see that they are, have uh, larger R values, as it looks like in the image. I can also load um, another data set here from. Um, it's here. Uh, rat tumor. 
uh, or about the whole data set, not the crop one. Here, this is a MRI rat tumor. You can see the tumor is brighter because it's a T, um, T2 sequence, or it actually has two tumors. And then you can use the uh, scribbles to uh, delineate the tumor and compute the um, volume, for example. So yes, it also works with MRI data, and it also supports anisotropic voxels because MRI often has these long voxels here. So they are um, you have thick slices with anisotropic voxels. OK. Um, yeah, thank you for the nice questions. Um, any more questions? Then uh, I, uh, yeah, I hope you found it interesting and feel free to ask for a um, free trial version. Yeah, th thank you everybody for, for attending the webinar uh, today. Thank you, Felix, for the excellent presentation. Uh, we got a lot of questions. Um, we're gonna make sure to get back to everybody today. And um, thank you for your time for being there today. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to hearing from you and learning more about your research projects. Uh, and everybody have a nice evening if you're in Europe and have a great day for everybody else. Thank you, Felix. Okay, thanks. thanks.